Hello everyone. Let me go over the description of demo problem 1 for you. Demo problem 1 is going to take us input a list of shopping items and it's going to create a simple shopping.html which is going to format the list of items into HTML list format. Let me switch over to Jupyter Notebook. Before I get started with writing for code for demo problem 1, I just want to let you know that I have provided detailed steps for pseudocode for this particular demo problem and also for demo problem 2. So you could potentially skip the part of the video lecture about the demo problem and you can go write the solution on your own. You already know everything in order to write the code for demo problem 1. Go ahead and pause the lecture video here and download the notebook template file either in order to follow along or to work on the demo problem on your own. So I'm going to create a gen underscore HTML function and I'm going to define two parameters. The first one is going to be shopping underscore list and the next one is going to be path which is going to be the path of shopping dot HTML. For now I'm just going to print shopping underscore list and let me create shopping underscore list before I call the gen underscore HTML function. I'm going to include apples, oranges and peaches as my shopping items. Let me go ahead and call the gen underscore HTML function. My first parameter is going to be shopping underscore list. My second parameter is simply going to be shopping dot HTML. Let's say that I want to create a local file called shopping.html. I'm going to go ahead and run the cell. We are getting a list of the shopping items. That's a good thing. Let's go through the pseudocode step by step. Step number one says open shopping.html. I can do that by calling the open function. I need to pass shopping.html as the first argument. That's inside argument path. So that's going to be my first argument. The second argument is going to be W, right? Because I want to open it in write mode. Let me capture the return value into a variable called F. I'm using F just because I'm going through a live demo. Always use meaningful variable names, even for file objects. And I'm going to close the file object right away. I always like to do that before I actually do any operations with it. Step number two says, write ul tag into html file so i'm going to say f dot write and within the write function call i need to pass this argument the string ul tag so i'm going to say open angle brackets ul close angle bracket and then that's it for step two step three says iterate over each item in the shopping list how can you do that you can just write a for loop correct so you can say for item in shopping underscore list. What do you want to do with each item? You want to write each item with li tag. So I'm going to say f dot write. I'm going to use li tag. I'm going to prefer to use just the opening tag over here. You'll find that a lot of websites only use the open li tag and they skip the close li tag because that's not mandatory. Right, that's it for step number four. Step number five says after you're done iterating, write the close ul tag. So I'm going to say f dot write and I'm going to write open angle bracket and then I'm going to say forward slash and close angle bracket. I've already done step number six. Let me go ahead and run the cell. I'm going to switch to my list of files over here. Notice that I have a shopping.html. When I render it on the website, uh, sorry, uh, when I render uh, the HTML file on the browser, it's going to have this really nice uh, formatted list of shopping items. Let's also look at the HTML source code. I can do that by clicking the checkbox and clicking on edit. Notice that uh, the source code is not really that formatted well. 
Why is that the case? That's because uh, the write function doesn't write uh, a new line by default. It's not like uh, the print function call. You need to explicitly add a new line. So I'm going to do that uh, for both ul tag and close ul tag. And I'm also going to do that for the li tag. Other than adding a new line, I'm going to add uh, a few spaces in front of the list tag so that uh, we get uh, a good formatting of the individual list item. So the li tag stands for list item. So let me go ahead and run uh, this cell again. If I refresh uh, my HTML rendered version, that shouldn't make any difference at all because I only added uh, formatting for the HTML source code. Notice that if I refresh the source code uh, display file over here, we are getting a much better format than before. All right, uh, that's it for uh, the first demo problem. Let's switch back to the slide deck and learn about more HTML tags. So far, we've been dealing with a very simple version of uh, HTML web page. The complex version of HTML web page for multiple websites is always going to contain two major tags. All of your HTML content will be present within a couple of tags. The first tag is called the HTML tag and the second tag is called as the body tag. This is going to be the typical format that you're going to see for multiple web pages on the internet. Let's talk about uh, the head tag, which is slightly different from all other HTML tags. That's because the head tag is not going to display anything within your actual HTML rendered page. Instead, you can do different things with the head tag, like mentioning the list of keywords in such a way that any search engine can find your website according to those keywords. For example, I can say that test is a keyword for my website and a Google search uh, on the term test is going to list your web page as per your web page's ranking. The second thing that you can do with an, a head tag is mention a title tag. The title tag uh, does not uh, get displayed as part of the web page itself. Instead, it's going to affect the title of the tag that you see for the current uh, web page that is being rendered on your Chrome or whatever browser it is. If you don't have a title tag, then your browser tab is going to simply say test.html. If you have a title tag, then it's just going to say whatever is mentioned within that title tag. Let's talk about how to mention a hyperlink. So far, we have only dealt with the simple formatting of text like uh, converting uh, text into a bullet point list or uh, uh, adding uh, formatting like bold, italics, and including vertical space and so on. Let's talk about uh, how to create a hyperlink. Let's say that I have two web pages a.html and b.html a.html says welcome please visit page b b.html says you're on page b wouldn't it be nice if we had page b text over here as a hypertext so that you can click on the link so that it will take you to page b.html over here how can we achieve that we need to use the anchor tag, which is in short a tag. Unfortunately, the h tag is used for header. So we are stuck with a for the hyperlink. How can we mention exactly which HTML page needs to get displayed whenever we want to click on the hyperlink for the hypertext page B? The way that we are going to mention that is by using something which is called as attribute name. Certain tags uh, in HTML have attribute names defined. The way that you're going to define attribute name 
is by saying attribute name as part of uh, the beginning tag and then you're going to say equal to attribute value so uh, the attribute uh, that you're going to use for mentioning hyperlink reference is going to be href which is in short for hyperlink reference and inside the value of the attribute you're going to give the name of the html file which is going to be your target page when you click on that hyperlink once you click on the link page b you're going to be able to view page b so your rendering is now going to say you're on page b notice that before we added uh, the hyperlink you just had plain text for page b all right uh, i'll wrap up this video here in the next video we'll go through demo problem 2